Today, it's Edwin's Monday Evening Property Rant. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance and the latest well notice post covering finance and property news. Monday evening again, and Edwin is back for another rant. Hey, Edwin, how are you going? Having fun yet? Uh, lots of fun, Martin. Yeah, forwards is backwards, backwards is forwards, up is up is down, down is up, uh, left is right, right is left. <laughs> it's madness, madness, madness. And the circus keeps on keeps on um, yeah, playing the tune and uh, there's more more players in, of course. Uh, the yeah, the merry-go-round keeps on going around and around and around, so it, it, it's interesting. And, the, and there are those that are caught up in the roller coaster that just about yeah, that's uh, that the tracks have ended. <laughs> Sooner than later, it's going to come off. Well, of course, the latest from Albo is uh, don't look over here where all the problems are. Look over there with the amount of air in your crisp packet. Right, shows shrink shrinkflation is now the story. You know, it's um the thing you should be focusing on. And so he's going to announce a crackdown on shrinkflation. I have to say, Edwin, um, when, when I saw this, I thought, oh, another example of, uh, you know, you don't want to focus on the critical things. We'll focus on something over there that we can talk about. You know, it's this misdirection stuff. Yeah, like it's um, uh, shrinkflation, uh, but uh, we keep on paying more in taxes. So, and more in uh, energy bills and costs. I mean, uh, you, uh, I know a lot of people are wishing that those, uh, that those areas of the economy would uh, shrink, but they're not. They're just getting uh, bigger and bigger. Those um, uh, yeah, bills are getting bigger and bigger. And uh, have you noticed also that Albo is putting on weight, Martin? So he must be eating a lot more chips as well. <laughs> well, I gather that his um, personal relationships might not be all that they were cracked up to be. So maybe that's something to do with it. Maybe it's, um, you know, you know, a bit, a bit of substitution going on. Uh, but I will say this, Edwin, um, I noticed that um, people are now saying that uh, there's real issues. So mortgage holders are survival in survival, it's skipping everything from meals to mobile phone bills to stay on top. And uh, I'm seeing that in my um, surveys too. And in fact, uh, on Tuesday, um, I'm going to uh, chat about what I'm seeing in my surveys. So that's the live stream on Tuesday. Um, there's so much to talk about in terms of what's going on. And this um, chart here was actually quite interesting because it showed the international house price to income ratios. And you can see that it's growing. But look at Australia. Um, <laughs> you know, if you go back um, 97 to eight, uh, 87 to 92, it was 2.8. We're now at 9.7 times. This is on demographic information. And that's way above New Zealand at 8.2 or um, Canada at 5.6. So it's no, no surprise, really, that we're having issues with simply the fact that people are struggling. And um, whilst I have to say that there are lots of people doing quite well, um, particularly if you've been benefiting from the tax cuts and you had quite large incomes, or indeed the $300 from um, Albo on electricity, but there's so many people that are really struggling. And um, Unfortunately, uh, you know, however you look at it, so this is another way of looking at it. This is actually the Dell's debt to income, disposable income chart. And you can see Australia's right at the top, 184 compared with 175 for Canada or 97 for the US. So once again, you can see that we are, we are way over. And wherever I look, um, you know, there's more grief. It's now, okay, let's celebrate the fact that petrol prices have actually um, come down at the moment. But Actually, with everything that's going on at the moment in the Middle East, uh, it's clearly going to be uh, an issue and prices might rise. Um, that's an issue, of course. Geopolitical risk um, is definitely there in the picture. But more immediately, food's a pain in the pocket. Grocery costs are the biggest pain point for Aussie, Aussie consumers. The average grocery spend was $200 in August 2024 compared with $150 in January 2024, that's a 33% increase in just six months. That's according to Compare the Markets Household Barometer of 2024. Wow. No wonder people are struggling. Yeah, I mean, we've been saying this for, for a while now that uh, a lot of people are sitting out there with a lot of equity in the properties. And a lot there are a lot of people, there's a lot of elderly, uh, retirees, um, empty nesters, whatever you want to call them, they're uh, they're sitting on property that are worth uh, millions of dollars, 
But uh, as we keep on saying, they can't. Uh, they can only mow the lawns and they can't eat the grass. Uh, or um, you know, uh, bricks and water isn't necessarily going to. Uh, you know, uh, it's not a healthy, uh, healthy diet in you know in, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the, it, it's all the added costs. What? What? Why aren't they? Why aren't they getting out? Why aren't they selling? Why aren't they uh, downsizing? Why aren't they? Uh, they, they could be doing a, a lot of different things because they, they, there aren't any choices. Uh, the, the local, uh, you know, they, they've grown up in areas where they've, you know, they've grown up in areas. They've lived there 60, 70 uh, you know, uh, years of their life and, and they're expected to move uh, 40, 50, 60 kilometres uh, further afield in order to to, you know, to downsize into a retirement village or a retirement home. I mean, they, so you've got a lot of people that are, that are caught uh, in... Um, uh, what would you call it? Court, uh, quagmire, court, you know, yeah, the the court and impasse that that they're just you know damned if they do, damned if they don't, uh, and and then you've got the young families uh, with uh, w- with children that are, are trying to provide, yeah, you know, give them a good education, and and have selected certain areas and certain suburbs of Sydney in order to uh, to to give them yeah you know, what the what the child uh, needs, whether it be special needs or or just. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, academic uh, uh, prowess. So, but the thing is, there are a lot of families that that are caught uh, and they can't move uh, because of the, the the rental prices. Of course, they can't move because there's really a shortage. Or, although there's more and more properties coming on the market, but there's still, nevertheless, a shortage in comparison uh, to where we were. Let's say we've just uh, caught up and just sort of surpassed a little bit uh, the 2022 numbers. But if we keep on bringing uh, in uh, more people to build the shortage that we're <laughs> that we're experiencing. The only people that the only people that are are, are celebrating are the likes of uh, High Rise Harry and and, and 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 the crew. So that that's I mean it, it's sad. It's a sad sad affair. This is what I say, Martin. You know, uh, up is down, down is up. Uh, yeah, left is right, right is left. It's we're we're, we're really living in a. Uh, in 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 a world that uh, they can't make any sense of it. Uh, I love uh, Philip's um, uh, post. It says time to bring out the garlic and and holy water. You know, Australia's richest man demands immediate immigration increase. Stop attacking foreigners. Seriously, this is this is this guy's uh, reasoning as to why we've got a we've got a crisis. Is it you know what's what what is he what is he saying? What is he trying to say, Martin? Well, of course, he's got a vested interest in flogging more dog boxes to more people. So let's be clear about that. And uh, I find it fascinating, Edwin, that the discussion has really crystallised quite recently. I don't know whether you saw the Alan Kohler com- conversation, but it was fascinating because Kohler was basically talking a little bit about the fact that uh, we have a property problem. And uh, he was pushing at specifically why high rise and uh, you know the truth of the matter is and he sort of put his finger on that quite nicely was that there is no way that councils or governments want to spend more on deploying significant infrastructure what they want to do is to leverage the existing infrastructure that's already in place which means going up rather than going out The trouble is, of course, Edwin, that means that your future is going to be high density, smaller, um, badly built probably as well, in existing areas, which of course is why there's a big debate going on with the councils at the moment. A lot of councils are resisting. So for me, this was a really important uh, conversation that uh, Cola had. Yeah, in in, in that conversation, he also uh, um, uh, raises what you and I spoke about last week, and that is... What we said is that this notion that uh, they're going to get rid of negative gearing is really just a um, it's just a political uh, political conversation in order to to um, uh, to, to to win votes. I mean, uh, Kohler in that um, in his in his report is you know, talking the fact that uh, you know, which is what I'm of the opinion they're not going to get rid of negative gearing because. Because they need the investors to buy these new dog boxes that are being built in order to have a a, a rental stream of property. Because if even if he, if if they do anything, it's just going to be modified. But okay, you've got your grandfathering rights uh, for those that already have uh, new the bought new 
uh, well, they're no longer new. But uh, anyone that wants to uh, take advantage of uh, the um, negative gearing, it's going to be you know, the, the new that we're going to be building, which is really goes back to strata lifestyle, right? Uh, and, and most investors uh, are going to be caught up in in the in the apartment complex. So that's really the only solution that we have. But then I go, we go back. I go back to our twenty twenty. Uh, episode of uh, of all roads point to all roads point to uh, Sydney. Uh, th- that was always uh, the game plan from uh, back then, Martin. We called it back in twenty in twenty twenty. There was no real intention for for any government uh, to decentralise the city or, or major um, uh, commercial hubs. I mean, we, we've got a a, a one eighty degree turn with you know, when you know, when the uh, courts in Parramatta were refurbished. They spent something like $130 million refurbishing the courts in, in Parramatta. Once that was finished, then all that money was spent. Then the yeah, the, um, the, the the judges, magistrates, and the uh, um, yeah, the, the judges, they, they basically said, we're not going to trouble the Parramatta. <laughs> to you, yeah, they let, they let the plebs come to us. We, yeah, we live in the eastern suburbs. Then, then you've got this, uh, I saw this whole turnaround, and I did a show and I did a story back then, I think it was with Domain, uh, with Jennifer Duke, and, and I brought to her attention um, what, what was happening there was when basically the uh, CBA uh, did, did a deal with uh, High Rise Harry and, and another mob uh, and, and, and built the uh, towers over in Redford. So, so much for decentralization. That, that, took, that took something like 23,000 jobs from Parramatta and Homebush back into the, back into the city. So it was always... This notion, but you can also go back to uh, to Premier Rand, um, if you recall, I think it was 82, 82 or 84, where th- they wanted to really take have the next major capital city uh, over in Orange, and, and that was hit on the head as well. So there's, there was real, there's, there hasn't been any real uh, drive or push to de- decentralise the city. So now... Um, now this whole push of wanting people to live you know, in in, the, in these uh, uh, you know, commercial hubs, uh, uh, you know, uh, transport hubs, uh, and, and pushing them to to live there, uh, pushing people to live in the high rise. But at the end of the day, people are people are a lot wiser. This is what I put up there on that post with um, uh, you know with with Alan's uh, uh, Alan's. Um, Linked to to the ABC report, and that is who benefits. Yeah, the benefits, the benefits for the state, uh, the downfall for the state, the benefits for the people, and the downfall for the people. At the end of the day, Martin, it is cheaper for the government to to try and push and you know, try to try to push this high rise development living. But unfortunately, long term, uh, short, medium, and long term, it doesn't benefit the uh, uh, the, the the people. Um, yeah, you know, that uh, outweighs the uh, the. the 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 downfall outweighs the benefits uh, for the people that want housing because um, I, I don't know if you've ever lived in a in a high rise development uh, I have I've, I've li- uh, the, in the building that was uh, six you know six seven uh, seven levels high and, and, and you know, it, it's it, you really got to get used to living in in these uh, dog boxes as you say as we often refer to them as uh, and. And then you've you've got to get used to the smells. You've got to get used to the uh, common areas. You've got to get used to the people that live there. And uh, God forbid your uh, your 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 neighbours are, are, are loud and proud, uh, you know, and, and 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 anything else in between. It, it's it, it's it's hard. It's a hard lifestyle. Let alone with let alone when you want to have uh, uh, pets or you want to have uh, children uh, or or, or you, you know, you've got. Yeah, you're living and you're surrounded by, uh, by by young families. I mean, it's it, it's a scary it, it's a scary thought, Martin. Uh, but the the main point that uh, Alan brings out in there is that basically the government's, in my opinion, is um, my take of it was they they run out of money. They really don't want to invest uh, in infrastructure uh, because they they're too busy investing overseas uh, with um, yeah with, with with the many. Uh, uh, wars overseas that were too busy donating to Bill Gates and in any other foundation and any other whim and wham that comes our comes our way and 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 uh, too busy going to Taylor Swift concerts, you know, spending money on Taylor Swift, uh, you know, uh, tickets, what, what, whatever the case may be, you know, um, millions of dollars in travel, uh, new new, uh, new, new air, airplanes for for the. Uh, 
uh, for the politicians to 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 fly around uh, to go to the to go to the meetings. So what what next? We, uh, what next? Seriously, there's so much uh, money that's spent in 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 other than uh, meeting the, uh, the the needs of uh, of the Aussie uh, Aussies that are trying to get into uh, the property arena, let alone just trying to get it trying to get a a rental property uh, that, that's going to be um, you know. Um, not not hampered with uh, with all the issues that uh, the, you get in the high rise development. Yeah, so there's a few things to unpack there. Firstly, just coming back to my where I came in on shrinkflation, right? So Albert wants to talk about the air in chip packets. <laughs> so that's a, a nice easy thing to try and uh, you know raise the public awareness of. Whereas these issues we're talking about are much much more serious, but nobody wants to talk about them. Uh, secondly, you asked me whether I'd ever lived in um, high rise. Yes, I did. When I first came to Sydney, I lived at Kirribilli, and uh, that was just over the over the water from the CBD, of course, looking out uh, over the harbour. Lovely location, but boy, it was so noisy. And um, I tell you, the worst noise is babies crying. It amazes me just how far through the building babies crying can actually. Um, you know, go through. And of course, that's not just during the day, but at night as well. So that's a real problem. The second issue is um, people don't realise that the lifts often make quite a lot of noise. And uh, you can be quite a long way, way away from the lifts, but they can still, um, you know, well, keep keep you awake at night, for example, if people are using the lifts. And the third thing, you mentioned it as well, is... Um, what other people are doing, and particularly what they're cooking. It amazes me how that can permeate through air conditioning systems and all of that. And uh, so, you, you know, in a high-rise environment, you are not your own master. You are very much uh, determined by all of those other people about you and what they're doing or not doing. And um, if you have uh, somebody down the hallway who decides to have a late-night party, what do you do? Well, you know, you put your earplugs in and hope it doesn't go on too late. Um <laughs> The, the the point I'm trying to make is that there are some compromises that people in a high rise environment often have to make. Now, if you've got a really well built high rise with all of the um, acoustic barriers between floors and everything like that, and you know all the other stuff, then maybe it's not too bad. But how many of those high rise developments of recent times have been built to standard, or better than standard? And how many of them have significant defects? And, you know, we talk quite a lot about the defects in high rise, but one of the most critical ones is the path of um, acoustics and acoustic treatments. And that's a corner that's being cut left, right and centre, in my view. And, of course, you don't notice it, notice it immediately, but you notice it the first night you're there. So to my mind, this is a very significant factor. And I'll, I want to link it to something else. If you look at research... There's a very significant set of research that says if you're exposed to continuous high noise levels, not very high, but, but somewhat high, then that does not do your mental health any good and it doesn't do your physical fitness any good. So what are the consequences of all of this in terms of people's long-term health and long-term welfare? And that's a question that nobody wants to talk about. No, and then you've got, uh, with regards to noise, yeah, then w when people start moving in, obviously, then you've got uh, the uh, people that just don't like carpet. They'll rip the carpet up and they'll just uh, yeah, put floating floorboards on without, uh, yeah, without uh, the, 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 yeah, uh, the, the green light of the uh, owners' corporation or the strata committee. And, and there, there are reasons why. You, you even have to go to to the extent of asking permissions because the floorboards need to have the the acoustic insulation as well as you as you mentioned earlier on. acoustics is a very is a major uh, a major issue yep. uh, and, and you know staying awake and then you've got shift workers and you, you've got all this you know uh, Albert talks about tertiary <laughs> inflation I mean yeah you, let's talk about uh, the, uh, the 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 shrinking working hours that people are having to face but yet they are counted as fully employed. Uh, you know, uh, that's that, that's uh, uh, seemed to have been for, uh, forgotten. I mean, you only need to work uh, five hours a week, I, I believe, and, and you're, you're 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 gainfully employed. So therefore, you go to the other side of the ledger. The other the, the other downpour, Martin, to to the solution that the state government and, and the governments are, uh, are pressing on us with regards to the 
uh, you know, future living standards in the, with these high rise developments is you've actually got to, you've actually, you're, you're going to go in there consciously thinking, believing, this is what, what the, the downfalls of, um, of, of these proposals uh, for the, you know, for the, for the people. And that is you're actually going in there uh, knowing that you're going to be not only paying the, 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 the higher price because you're buying it new and shiny, the higher price going in, but the ongoing costs, but more to the point with the, with the understanding that in three years, five years, 10 years down the track, potentially you're going to be your, your, uh, uh, your, your principal place of residence is going to be worth less than what it was when you bought it. And this is what we're what we're finding now, and this is what you know, we're going to touch on later on with the WeChat chatterers as well, what they're talking about. But this is and this is the whole the whole thing. So you're going in there with that with that notion, and but yet the government wants you to, and they will they will become joint venture you know, equity partners in in, in this uh, in this proposal. Uh, yeah, you know, they're going to stand they're going to stand with you. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's crazy. Uh, to think, yes, uh, it's a way, as Alan says, to you know, to to stop people from uh, uh, you know, thinking and believing that uh, the principal price of residence should be some sort of investment vehicle. But hey, th- that is how many have gone from in the past, in previous generations, they've gone from uh, uh, the apartment lifestyle I- into a freestanding home, uh, you know, I- I- in the outskirts of Sydney back then. Um, you know, uh, back in the day, back in the eighties, in the nineties, uh, but you can't make that leap anymore in, in many parts of Sydney. You just, you, you just can't because by the time you you you, you, you refinance, you find that your uh, your, your 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 principal place of residence is worth you know anywhere between uh, depending on where you are and what what city in Australia you're in, you know anywhere between ten and seventeen uh, percent uh, below what you bought it back in uh, twenty seventeen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've been calling out for some time the high-rise disaster that is uh, to the northwest of Sydney, Ryde and places like that, where a lot of those high-rise prices have dropped. And, uh, you know, in some cases, they're now 20% lower than where they were. And uh, the strata fees have continued to rise, of course. And that's the other factor that people have forgotten about in some of this, that strata fees tend to go up. Dramatically, um, so the cost of living there goes up. The capital appreciation isn't there, and whether you're an investor or whether you're living there yourself, um, it's a problem. But the Greens, of course, um, well, they're still spruiking the, um, you know, let's go and do this. So this is actually uh, Max Chandler and Mathis. <laughs> you know, check this out. Under the Greens, a government-owned developer would build this beautiful set of apartments to be rented and sold for cheap. This 13-storey, 65-apartment development will be part of the 610,000 homes built by the developer. And if you look closely, you can count up. Okay, this is an artist's impression. Count up all of the people that's appearing in this picture, right? And you can just imagine. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I have to say that I think the Greens have completely lost the plot on this one, Edwin, I must say. Yeah, look from, from uh, yeah, and that's I guess in in uh, in uh, our ways, uh, push for this um, yeah, for this uh, equity scheme to revive the equity scheme, which I, I, I believe only twelve percent of the people took up, uh, or twelve percent of the, the the available uh, post got taken up, and 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 this is Max's uh, Max's um, uh, rebuttal in a way, um, but if you look at that closely, the artist's impression, there's a hell of a lot of glass. In that building, I mean, that, does does Max understand what it would take to cool that that thing down and to keep it warm in, in winter? It, there's a lot of energy that's going to be used uh, in that building in order to keep it cool in summer and warm in uh, warm in winter because there's a there, there's a hell of a lot of glass there. That, that's the first impression that I got from when, when I saw it. Uh, and it. It's just and and. Just can you can you imagine, Martin? Can you imagine what the what this development company that's going to be owned by the government, what what it what it would look like? Who's going to make up the board? I, uh, my guess is it's going to have about twenty four board members, right? Each of them will be on uh, minimum, you know, let's say you know, uh, part time board members. They'll be on three hundred and fifty k a year part time. 
uh, the CEO, CFO, and COO will will they'll all be on a million dollars, uh, you know, on an annual basis. So you know, and, and then under that, they've got to have their staff, right? And each in uh, in each, you've got to have a staff of, uh, you know, let, let's say, you know, ten, you know, and and so forth. I mean, it, it's crazy just the thought of it. The 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 amount of money that's going to be spent on creating, as I, as we've said before, the amount of money that is spent on creating committees, uh, creating these um, new uh, boards, uh, new, uh, uh, what would you call it, uh, social plans uh, in, in order to get out of the mess, but not dealing with the, with, with, with the elephant in the room. And, you know, the, the, the cost. But, yeah, we go back to... Uh, my bugbear, and that is, but yeah, we're still not building, Martin. We're still really not building. We've got lots of pretty pictures out there. We got lots of yeah, uh, you know, pretty uh, you know, uh, designs, and and this is what we're going to do here. This is what we're going to do there. The the the, the private um, uh, the, the private sector is just sitting back. Mm. They just sit back and saying, "You're mad. You 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 you're mad." Unless even if you even if you gave the land. Even if they gave the developers the land for free, right? People are still going to be paying on average. Um, uh, they'll, they'll be paying on average, yeah, you know, close to a million dollars for a two-bedroom apartment. And, and can you imagine paying two million dollars, uh, a million dollars for a two-bedroom apartment in the West? And we brought that up in that development that Chris means, you know, in that in that segment that we did last week. We we, we brought it up that uh, a one-bedroom apartment. Uh, out in the middle of nowhere, out in the flood uh, flood zone, uh, they, they're flogging it off for six hundred and fifty thousand, a two bedroom for eight fifty to nine hundred and fifty, and a three bedroom for one point one million. I mean, uh, out in Wupu, and, and this is this is their solution. This is the, this is the, the world's the, the world's getting crazier by the day. Yeah, absolutely. And just on that, uh, did you see this one? This was actually uh, a recent article that said. Victoria's biggest developer is wiping $60,000 off the cost of a house and land package for first home buyers to boost efforts to build the state out of a housing crisis. Stockland is cutting $40,000 from the cost of a block of land and partnering with uh, one of the builders there. About half of the uh, inquiries Stockland's received are from prospective first home buyers, uh, but only a quarter of purchases are marked actually market entrance um there's a will and a need for home ownership they just need some help with the way to get there but then they refer specifically to the state government's 10,000 first homeowner grant and also they would offer would be by $70,000 in assistance as well um it'll apply to more than 100 home and land packages across the developers victorian communities and I have to say, Edwin, that this is a classic example of, um, you know, when you're drowning, um, panic harder. This is just horrendous. Um, this is not the time to be offering these sorts of incentives for first home buyers. Not least because, as you say, you know, what you do is you end up um, committing yourself to stuff that you probably shouldn't be committing to. And, and again, I question the quality of the builds and I question the strategy as well. But it makes a good headline, doesn't it? Look, it does, and this is why this is why we go back to the to, to yeah to how we started the the show. You know, left is right, right is left, up is down, down is up, um, uh, and and because th this is this is the whole upside down world that we're in, in at the moment, Martin. Right? This is you, you've got at the moment there's there's close to sixteen thousand. Uh, there's close to 16,000 freestanding homes for sale in Melbourne, in the, in uh, according to uh, the, the Melbourne region, according to domain. That we've got double the amount of homes for sale. This is freestanding homes uh, for sale in, in the Melbourne region than than what we have in the in in the Sydney region, right? We've got close to four and a half thousand uh, blocks of land for sale in the Melbourne in the Melbourne region. What does that tell you? You know, we, the, the, the cost to build is, is horrendous. So when you start throwing these things at the market, you've got to ask yourself the question. You've got to ask why and where is the problem? 
You know, what, what problem are they trying to solve? They're not trying to solve the housing problem because if they were trying to solve the housing pro problem, right, you've got bloody, you've got, you know, almost 16,000 homes that are up on the on the website, uh, on the on the domain portal for sale currently that you could go and, and choose from, right? So, you know, and, and the other the other thing that you've got to keep in mind is that don't forget HIA told us, uh, our insider in HIA told us that, um, you know, uh, over over fifty percent, um, you know, before the mainstream media broke broke the news, that uh, over fifty percent of the uh, even you know the, the the main builders, the big the, the big boys, uh, are, are trading insolvent. And, and look at what happened recently in in um, in, in Sydney in uh, in uh, around Box Hill, where uh, the a developer, a Chinese developer, uh, allegedly went bust. Because you know, people that bought the blocks of land uh, three years ago uh, for five and six hundred thousand dollars, now those blocks of land are worth twelve, uh, you know, one one point one to one point two uh, million dollars. Um, you know, they, they've gone bust and they've on sold those blocks to you know to another uh, a, another builder. And I mean, it, it just it, it all smells uh, all, all, all smells bad. So, but I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I've been saying for. Uh, over two and a half decades, uh, the solution to a lot of these uh, to, you know, to 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 building the solution in, in you know uh, you know my my, my uh, um, uh, uh, sacred cow is um, that they've got to eliminate a lot of the taxes that the developers and builders pay after the purchase of the land in order to make it uh, cost effective to build and build. And build comfortably, and and not get caught up uh, with all the you know with you know you know uh, holding the bag, and, and many traders going broke, and in in creating a ripple effect to then the consumers losing their losing their deposits and and everything else in between. So because uh, post uh, the, the value of the land, uh, when I did the story in uh, twenty, I think it was twenty twelve, when I wrote the story in one of the magazines. Uh, and I did a, a, an analysis of, of cost of construction and what you know, the taxes and impulse and duties that that uh, uh, builders and developers were paying. It came out to something like 42, 37 or 42 uh, percent of the value of the property was made up of taxes uh, and, and you know and duties and, and everything else. So this is if you if you if they really want to do something, that's where you that, that's where you target because as you say, Martin, once you have a handout, um, on the other side, after completion, once you have a handout post, uh, you know, post the um, or, or on the sale or, or for people to purchase, uh, the handout's given to the purchaser. Well, that only inflates the value of the property. Then, you know, when you've got these handouts, also banks of banks have a conniption because they've got to then assess uh, your serviceability, uh, you know, not based on the gifts. Uh, but based on on, on your uh, on the capacity to 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 pay uh, ongoing, so and when you've got this free, uh, yeah, free gifts or free this, free that, um, it, it creates m many issues and it distorts the market uh, a great deal. And banks know this. Yeah, well, I think market distortion is is spot on, and uh, it's interesting. I don't know whether you saw the latest data on that, but the um, in ABS data showed. That there was a, quite an uptick in investor lending this last month. It's continued quite strongly. In fact, to, to the point that I actually um, made a show called Home Lending Booms, but what have they got to hide? The reason I call that what have they got to hide is simply this. The ABS data, which was actually published monthly, and it's quite interesting information, important information, they're now going to start publishing every three months. And you sort of scratch your head thinking, well, hold on a moment, this critical information, why are you now only wanting to um, do it every three months rather than every month? Well, I think it's partly because they not necessarily want to um, have this out in the public domain quite so much. It will be easier for um, banks to um, basically uh, just go on lending as a result. And, and it's quite fascinating that the banks, of course, have been pushing really hard. This is actually um, the latest uh, ANZ 
bank boss Shane Elliott said it was absurd that when making loan serviceability calculations required by regulators, banks were not allowed to factor in the likelihood that a young professional borrower's income would rise in the years after they secured a home loan. So they're pushing again. They're pushing again for APRA to, to dial back. And, you know, they are just so desperate to try and drive more and more uh, lending, of course. Now, that is a problem because, as you say, you may get a bit of help from the bank of mum and dad or the grandparents or whatever to be able to buy, but you've still got to service it. And the cost of everything, you know, food up 33% as we discussed earlier. Um, but the other factor which I want to just come back to, of course, a lot of articles this week you know, rate drop could mean a swift rise in prices. Now they're actually saying, hey, you know, as soon as rates are, are actually cut, there will be a massive rise. Um, you know, this actually is uh, uh, just citing that um, sentiment will change, uh, four cuts next year, et cetera, et cetera. So they're actually wanting to sort of um, be bullish on that. Guess where um, the uh, um, loyalties lie? And then, of course, another one here, be careful what you wish for. Rate cuts would instantly drive surge in Sydney home prices. And they're quoting some of those areas that um, uh, this is a Ray White survey again. You know, Ray White, completely objective and independent, of course. Um, and the same again in the Ray White survey, rate cuts may cause lifts in home prices. So despite the fact that the auction clearance rates are actually still relatively weak, and Shane Oliver is saying things are going to be quite um, uh, weak for some time, um, even Tim Lawless is saying the uh, high level of stock on the market alongside demand side constraints like lower borrowing capacity, low sentiment, affordability challenges, it's like that clearance rates will continue to fade as buyers benefit from greater choice and less urgency. So there is this sort of dissonance between uh, let's spruik to high heaven once again and the reality of, of the markets. And people are caught in the crossfire, I think, of this. And, uh, you know, I, I'm fascinated by the fact that uh, in my one-to-one -one conversations recently, quite a few people have really picked up on this vibe that um, things are going to actually mean that prices are going to accelerate again. And I'm saying, well, yeah, maybe, maybe not. It's ne perhaps not going to be as clear cut as you might think. Uh, and, you know, I have to say, I think people should be really, really careful. But of course, Channel 9 was also spruiking this as well. Thousands of people are hanging out for an interest rate cut so they can finally break into the property market. New data says prices could surge the moment the Reserve Bank does move. So everyone's spruiking it. Well, first of all, Martin, first of all, come on, you've got to dial, dial back on, uh, on Ray White, right? Don't forget, your, 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 your good friend, uh, Meredith Conisby, is, the, uh, is the, the, the economist there for Ray White. So you've got to, you know, if you, if you don't, if you don't uh, dial it back, she won't come on the show again. Uh, so um, you've got to be careful there. But look... What, what do we see on the market, Martin? What do we see on the market or on the or on the ground uh, as we're uh, as we're traveling around different markets? You know, the guys are. What, what do they see? What what's the story out there? The market certainly, uh, yeah, it's very choppy across different markets of Sydney. Of course, um, the the there the, the, there is a uh, yeah more hesitancy than than what there was that was three months ago, uh, but there's still a lot of a, a lot of money on the sidelines. Uh, and you know, uh, uh, yeah, people, uh, yeah, people are, are, are waiting. Um, I, I was talking to one of our followers uh, yesterday, or was it this morning? Uh, this public holidays, I lose track. Um, and yeah, we, we were we were talking uh, about uh, you know uh, about the market and what it, what, what it was um, what it was doing, what we were seeing uh, in in different areas of uh, of Sydney, and. The thing is that I'm not, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're both of the opinion that there's more going to come and in, in, in have an effect on our property market from overseas because of all these uh, hot wars or wars or rumours of wars that whatever you want to call it, or all this, uh, all the issues on, you know, geopolitical issues that we've got uh, uh, abroad. There are one thing for sure is uh, we're getting a lot of inquiry from expats that are coming back uh, to you know, to utilize our services. 
Um, we've uh, uh, also, uh, um, you know, people in the Asian community that have uh, held our uh, PA and have uh, left Australia now they want to come back because the, the, there's a lot of instability in uh, out in the rest of the world. That's where most of, uh, you know, I guess, my concern is. Uh, you know how much how much is going to come back. My concern for the for the for those the locals that are trying to get into the market. Um, there is a fair bit of money on the sideline at the moment. Uh, we see that uh, you know, from you know, from our own, uh, uh, people that have made inquiries and what, who we talk to. Um, uh, again, agents also that have got a lot of buyers uh, looking to buy because and, and these people are, are very selective of what they want, they can see. Uh, the reason why they're still on the sideline is because they can see that a lot of the properties that have come on the market are not necessarily your, the, the, the first choice. You know, there may be you know, second or third choice in, in, in properties that are, uh, are asking way too high uh, to start off with and just waiting to, for more to land on market in those areas in order to, to uh, for the vendors to be uh, more realistic or the agents also to, um, to uh, yeah, discuss with the vendors to be uh, to be more realistic, and 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 then uh, because it's not only a matter of just buying and paying the stamp duty, uh, which is yeah five percent, but but also uh, you'd be you, you'd be spending uh, five to ten percent to get it you know in the condition or in the way that in the style that you want to live in for uh, you know, you know medium term uh, or long term. So these are these this is what we we are seeing, but. With regards to the spruiking of the uh, rate uh, rate cuts, um, well, they've got to do that. Uh, they, they've got to do that, uh, you know, in order to you know, to keep the spending happening, right? <laughs> and, so, and to sell to sell publication, but people just got to be uh, people just got to be careful uh, of not not to get you know, uh, caught out trying to trying to call the market, trying to trying to you know, trying to buy at the dip or uh, you know, sell at the uh, uh, at the peak is, you know, you, you, know, you, know, you, you really need a crystal ball for that. Um, but you just got to see the, the, the movements and you just got to see uh, the, the movements for those that are looking at wanting to buy into the market, are looking at wanting to, uh, uh, you know, get in and, and, and get a principal place of residence. You just got to keep on looking and, and uh, searching uh, the, the the area that and look at what's happening in in that in that market that that suburb the area or or, uh, or a cluster of suburbs uh, because it, you know the the markets as I said they're choppy they're uh, uh, all, all over Sydney and and also be careful with uh, uh, with the properties that are coming on but I think as I said the the um, people that buy. On emotion, when the market, when there's a, a rate drop, well, yeah, they they ones you're never going to stop that. Um, uh, you, you're never going to, you know, that, that's the panic buying. That's the, that's when you buy with emotion. Uh, I think where 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 people have got to be uh, very, um, as I said, concerned uh, about are the uh, are the the people coming back from uh, from abroad, uh, that, yeah, from Europe. Uh, the Middle East uh, and other parts of China, and, and you got to uh, assess well, where do they want to live in? Well, you know, what parts of um, uh, of the Sydney region or the region or the city that you're that you live in uh, do these people want to want to live in? Uh, and, and look at uh, you know, what's what's going to happen there. And if yeah, you know, so there's so, so many moving parts at the moment, Martin. But to just sort of make blanket uh, bl blanket suggestions is you know. Uh, is one of the reasons why we have this show is to to help educate our listeners and our followers as to you know not get caught up in the emotion, but be more analytical and be more uh, make decisions uh, based on uh, on logic and reason rather than emotion. Yes, well, digital finance analytics says it all, right? So we think there's a very important role for. Uh, looking at the, the real information. And I'll make this point, Edwin, that um, you know you can get caught up in the mega trends, our price is going to go up or price go down. But if you're an individual um, prospective purchaser, you're going to be making a buying decision based on your own personal circumstances and uh, what you need in terms of somewhere to live and all of those things. And uh, I've consistently said that you, know, you can easily get caught up 
in these high level spooky comments from the you know the agents who say prices will go up or other people saying oh it's not never the time to buy the truth is that often it is the time to buy you have to buy right and and that's the first point the second point this article from um the financial review, uh, Neela Sweeney actually bailed the cat quite nicely. Why nobody's biting in these buyer markets, right? Smaller investment grade apartments in good locations languish unsold in areas of Sydney and Melbourne, even though vendors are willing to cop a loss because they don't suit the demands of today's markets, according to CoreLogic. And she quotes Sydney's northwestern Epping, which is close to Ryde, of course, the median unit value has slumped by 18.4% from its peak in 2017, and total listings jumped 24%. And more widely, in other areas, there are similar falls. So I think this is a really important observation. And I think it goes directly back to the WeChat chatters as well, right? Because the WeChat chatterers are saying, forget these sorts of apartments, you don't want to go there. Yeah, these are a no-go investment. And this is why we say you've really got to know your market, as you, yeah. you, you um, Neela put, points out there, which you uh, which you read out. And that is, yeah, if you look at if you look at what was built, and more to the point, if you look at who built a lot of the apartments in uh, in Eastwood, uh, Epping, and and along the uh, in Carlingford, I mean, they, they are they are diabolical. They're on main roads, hard to get in and out. They were predominantly built for for student accommodation to accommodate the students and the uh, you know, the and and that that would go to the um, you know, lo- local university and, and and would commute and because of the uh, concentration of your WeChat chatter groups there in those areas, so it's you know th- this is where where um, you, you've got to really know know your product. You really got to know uh, have a lot of background knowledge. And this is where the uh, WeChat chatterers are uh, uh, actually last week to be in the, in the groups, in a couple of the groups that have been uh, uh, talking about DFA and and what they've been reading. And, and they've been, um, you know, uh, I said it before, I mentioned it to you before, uh, uh, you know, over six months ago, uh, that the WeChat chatter groups that uh, Dusty and Evan participate in are, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, looking out for your commentary for the DFA commentary and and, and yeah, w- what's said on uh, across the board with the um, yeah with the different videos that you uh, that, that you put out on um, on Walk the World. So it, it's it, it's interesting for for them. It's still uh, no go. It's a no go investment. Um, and but it's just the, the mainstream media uh, uh, are just picking it up now. Uh, we've been saying it for a, for a while. Um, it's it's really it's really uh, a product. Uh, High rise developments were always from the um, from back in in 20, uh, 2012, 2013 when they started when the uh, FIRB changed the regulations so that anybody and everybody can uh, that, that 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 gets uh, you know, FIRB approval can own a a new apartment, a new dwelling in in Sydney. It was really where where the uh, the, the the state government basically got a shot in the arm of the uh, of the drug known as a stamp duty, and, and they've um, you know they, they've become uh, addicts and you know super addicts uh, along the way. I mean they put um, Hunter Biden to shame, uh, you know, with, with with what goes on in the state parliament. So yeah, uh, it, it's it, it's just one of those things. But when you look at the, the makeup of what has been built? When you look at the, the 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 aftermath, I'm not saying all apartments, and I'm not saying all locations. Uh, there there are uh, apartment blocks that uh, you know that have gone up in value. Apartments that have sold uh, for a lot more than what they, they were bought uh, three four years ago. Uh, but you really got to be uh, picky and choosy. You really got to know what you what you're looking at and what you're looking for. Whereas what they're building them for now, and and the reason why they were you know um, you know that were building these these dog boxes was predominantly for the for the overseas in, uh, investors uh, that those people that the the investors from from mainland China that were just throwing money left right and center at the Sydney market from back in 2012, uh, and where they could literally buy you know a whole group of them could buy an entire uh, 
uh, complex, and that's why that's why we've got what we've got, and this is why we've got issues with uh, with with the owners' corporation or the, um, the the strata companies. Why it, it became not only a, a, a junkie's haven uh, for the state government with stamp duty, but it became a junkie's haven for also for the uh, for the strata companies because they could milk. Uh, the, these investors that that were abroad that didn't know what what, what was going on they didn't know the regulations so but now that the now that the uh, state government means has uh, cracked down on the uh, on the on the strata laws uh, it's becoming harder and harder to sell these to uh, to to investors uh, uh, abroad and not only that Martin but also the, uh, the 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 major groups that were buying these were in mainland China and they've got no way of getting the money out now anyway. So yeah, you can whistle Dixie uh, if these things are going to continue uh, uh, to fly, and hence the reason why developers don't want to build. Um, uh, you know, and, and one of the other reasons why we brought out in, in in the show why these you know were monstrously overvalued was because the uh, the spruikers, uh, the, the marketing companies, were getting paid uh, upwards of five, six, seven, and eight percent in commissions. To flog them off. I mean, I know a lot of, I know, I know a number of accountants and um, mortgage brokers and financial planners, uh, you know, moonlighters, real estate agents currently, and are trying to flog these off to, you know, to to super funds, you know, to self managed super funds, and and high net worth individuals that uh, that need to depreciate and need to uh, to write off uh, some of the tax. I mean, that's that's the game, uh, but you know. But rather than, um, but this is this is an area that's taboo, right? This is an area that the government won't won't really uh, look at, look at controlling, uh, and and this is these exorbitant commissions, which at the end of the day, it's uh, the consumer that pays for for it anyway. So all these things are uh, have been um, are getting harder for these uh, for these marketing companies to navigate through, and hence the reason why the WeChat charter is the same. Yep, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, um, no, no go. Uh, and and this is why I keep on saying that uh, uh, freestanding homes uh, will uh, will persistently uh, will continually uh, you know, gain value uh, over time because the land ga- gains value and and the lifestyle is something that um, the majority of of those who want a roof over their head uh, you know desire but can't can't have. But even from a rental point of view, spot on. Everyone. And I want to pick up specifically on one of the points you made there, which is the issue of poorly built, constructed, uh, poorly constructed to high rise. And there was an article here which was uh, quite interesting because um, the argument that is being mounted is that, and they used an example of an investor who had uh, four apartments in a building in Sydney's inner west, and there's a significant waterproofing issue, the bill, half a million dollars. And uh, they're basically saying, well, the new laws, which were consequences of experiences of Sydney's Opal Tower and Mascot Tower, are actually creating costs that many investors and owner occupiers are unable to cover. And they're arguing the laws went too far and pushed prices up for both owners of existing homes and builders. Um, That's, of course... uh, one lobby group member from the Urban Task Force said, but on the other hand, of course, um, you know the New South Wales Building Commissioner said this is these changes were required because of the issues with regard to poor construction, and um, this isn't a band aid solution. This is actually something which is uh, a vital work to undertake remediation. Defects such as waterproofing can have significant consequences for the health and amenity of strata residents and their buildings, and. The fact is, of course, interestingly, the apartments were built in the 1930s in this particular case. And so trying to find the right balance here between you know, the, 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 the two ends of the spectrum is quite interesting. But my takeout point here is that the apartment repair laws are actually putting a microscope under the costs of strata managers and as we've said in so many shows, Edwin, the fact is that these strata costs have gone through the roof. You know, some of that's inflationary, 
but some of it's also because of the relationship between the strata managers and the builders and who's got the accountability and et cetera, et cetera. So the problem is that if you're an owner or an investor in some of these properties, you're up for huge bills, which you can't control. Yeah, and this is why, why uh, you know, a number of uh, a number of our followers that have reached out to me over the uh, over the years, uh, you know, uh, in, you know, whether it be through uh, on X uh, or on other social media platforms that I've participated in in the past, you know, they've um, you know, I've, I've always said to them and and family and friends and whoever is uh, you know I know that's looking at buying into into a strata complex. If you're going to be buying into a strata complex, you 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 you're silly if you did, did not make yourself available to become a member of the uh, of the committee. Yeah. Uh, because you you need to you need to be proactive. Uh, and God forbid that you're in a in a in a complex where the majority are are, are investors and they live overseas because very little is going to get get done unless you're in the you're in the committee pushing for things to get done. Uh, the other issue there, of course, is the holding the uh, the strata managers accountable for the uh, for for the bills and the and the finances of the um, uh, yeah the the the, or the 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 cost of, of maintenance uh, and the sinking fund. Uh, I mean, some of these when you start comparing what gets done to the quotes. Uh, in you know who's in their you know who's in their pocket or or, or you know, or who's going to give them a, a bigger kickback? You know, you, you could be 20, 30, 40 percent difference in prices in getting things in getting things done, Martin. I mean, I've I know it because I used to go toe to toe. Um, Eighteen years ago, I used to go toe to toe with Net Strata when um, when they were managing uh, three of the complexes where we had uh, uh, yeah rental yeah we had, we were managing properties for uh, for owners. For landlords, you know, the part of our rent, I used to go toe to toe with them, and and I used to forever have have um, arguments with the strata managers uh, because I, I could get quotes from, you know, from um, you know, from different work plumbers, electricians, uh, you name it. I could, you know, and back then, you know, the the, the quotes were 30 percent apart. Then then insurance is another issue. Um, and I mean, this is why Ned Strata got themselves into a lot of into a lot of caca, uh, you know, and it's only just brought, come to the surface. But we've known about this for uh, for you know, almost two decades mm. of the issues that were going on there anyway. With but that's that, that's just scratching the surface of what goes on. This is why I say to people that if you're living in in a in a uh, Strata complex, uh, and you, know, you you need to make yourself if you if you live in your own uh, the the, uh, the lot. In a, in the strata complex, you need to um, uh, you know, present yourself, make yourself available to be to be a member of the owners' corporation and attend all the um, annual general meetings or or the EGMs as well. Spot on. Yeah, well, it's important to get engaged. And uh, I've had a, a few people tell me some horrendous stories where they've tried to get engaged, but uh, found it very difficult because essentially the the voting blocks are such that. It's very hard to get anything anything done. Now, talking about getting anything done, you threw a little invite out to Tom Panis, right? Because he actually pre- created a a video which was not particularly positive re- with regard to what was going on. And uh, so you said, "Hey, um, you know, maybe the, um, uh, the the market is uh, beginning to hit home as the market stalls. How to invite you to share your thoughts on how base advertising under quoting should be dealt with?" Oh, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you, you 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 know that you know when you know that when, when you know that when 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 one of the main um, uh, you know uh, auctioneers in the Sydney in the Sydney uh, real estate arena is calling out uh, selling agents for uh, for underquoting, you, you know that the, the, the we're in a world of shit, right? And, and 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 that's it. Apart from the fact that we are, Helen, have we, you and I, have been talking about these uh, these issues, and 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 as I uh, as I've been sharing over the years, it, it's all it, it's all good and fine when the market's going up and you're under quoting, um, yeah, to you know, uh, you know, per se. But uh, but when the market stalls or it starts going backwards, uh, this is when this is when uh, 
uh, where, when these shenanigans work against the agent and more to the point works totally against uh, the, the the vendor. So this is the shenanigans. This is where we are. But that, that he won't take the he, he won't take it. He won't take the um, uh, the, the the challenge. I, I know you've invited him and you've also invited Mark Boris. Uh, I've also texted uh, Tom. Uh, I've also you know, had a face to face invite with him on one of his auctions. Uh, but I'll keep on. I'll, I'll keep on um, I- inviting him, and yeah, because uh, a lot of it too. Also, Martin, is if you if you're going to start, you know, the old saying is if you're going to start uh, to coming forth with this, you got to also come with clean hands. And a lot of uh, you know, we've got a lot of stuff that that he's put on on um, on his training programs. Um, where, as I say, for as I've been saying for many years, you know, a, a lot of these shenanigans come from the halls of the uh, real estate institutes in the first place because the uh, board members of the real estate institutes uh, are the uh, the owners of the main franchise groups, which uh, this is where, you know, price it low, watch it go, price it high, uh, you know, uh, watch it stay, uh, you know, um, it comes from this is, this is, this is, these are, these come, come from their training manuals and, you know, it, Maybe one day, maybe one day he will take up the challenge, and we can ask him uh, certain questions. Um, I dare say, you know, um, you know, he, uh, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't believe it will, it will happen, but we'll keep on pressing. But then there's a classic example of of, of what what the shenanigans uh, uh, does and how it plays out in real life. So there are two properties. Uh, that one of our one of our followers sent me, and he said, uh, "You know, uh, Kim and Jen from McGrath have made two of their vendors go to auction a second time after the first auction was unsuccessful. This is only a few weeks back, uh, and he na- and it gives me the the rundown of the, the the two properties in you know in in the Blacktown LGA, and, and this is this is what happens. This is this this is um, where uh, where in one of the auctions there were no bids." Because people have woken up to, uh, yeah, people are waking up, or in many places they're woken up to uh, the shenanigans that agents play, and and, and although they they price it low, uh, and knowing that the vendors' expectations are a lot higher, they and as Tom says in his video also, is they the pricing at two three hundred thousand dollars below what the owner wants, and and when it comes to uh, other properties in the area or other agents that have got the properties uh, pegged at the uh, at the true market value for uh, on yeah you know, uh, on that week, um, they don't believe them and and they don't get many attendees because they they believe that everybody's playing the same game. And in this case, uh, I in a lengthy response to this, uh, what what he sent me, the our follower that sent me this, yeah, you know, when he asked the question, wonder if the vendor pays twice for the auction fees. My response to that was. Uh, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't believe I don't believe the the uh, owners will, will be uh, asked to pay again. Uh, what I believe is these are two of the many properties that these individuals uh, have misrepresented. That the owners have dug in, dug the hills, and basically are holding them accountable. And I dare say that the uh, that these uh, uh, agents uh, are, are going to be. Paying out of their, their 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 pocket now, moving forward with their, any campaign or any any fees moving forward, and it wouldn't surprise me. And yeah, you know, if I knew the owners, I'd I'd be telling them to also hold them accountable for any losses by way of uh, deduction on the commission. You know, if the property um, fails to 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 achieve the price that the that the agents told them that they would achieve. Yeah, it's interesting, Edwin. And in fact, I um, put a, a show up the other day called Don't Be Misled by Vendor Discounting, right? And and I wrote this show because I was actually asked by one of the big newspapers to um, um, basically put some ideas as to how much vendor discounting is going on. And I said, you can't because you don't understand the baseline point, right? To what extent are prices inflated by overquoting? Uh, or are real. Um, and so all of these um, smoke and mirrors around vendor discounting is a, is a mess uh, because the fact is that you've got no firm baseline. 
And uh, I have, have a feeling that in some cases, the vendor discounts that are being quoted by a lot of the sites are a combination of uh, underquoting and, um, you know, basically uh, trying to actually force, uh, you know, vendors to, to come um, back to the point. So to my mind, vendor discounting is, is a furphy. Look, it is. And this is why, you yeah, know, the, 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 the website that keeps on uh, plugging away, I mean, each to the rain. Uh, good luck if it puts out some some information, but um, won't go into too much detail. It, it's it, it, you know, it's it, it, it's it, it's uh, secondary, if not uh, tertiary, you know, third tier uh, information as far as I, 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 yeah, we're, we're concerned. Um, uh, as you say, because we know that agents buy the listing when they go when they go and give a market appraisal, yep. and buying the listing is is what what's known as overquoting uh, for the property in order to get the custom. Uh, and, and then the the role of the agent isn't uh, the the primary role of the agent isn't to 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 uh, to, to achieve uh, the, the high the, the high value that they put on the market appraisal or you know, on the CMA. Um, the, 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 the primary role of the agent is to bring your expectations down uh, within the first week uh, to, you know, to, to you know, meet the market, um, as they say. And, and, and that's, that is the, you know, what, um, what they go, that they go in for. They, get, they, they, they sell you the dream, or as Tom says, uh, give them hope. And within the first week, you uh, or before you even walked out of there, they know that you're going to be they're, they're going to be dropping the price, uh, you know, w within the first week, uh, you know. And there's a video that I posted of him saying it. I mean, it's his training program, not mine, right? So I'm only talking fact. It's up there on my on my uh, Twitter feed, uh, on my X feed, so people can see it for themselves. Mm. Um, you know that. Uh, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be. Saying this, if he if he wasn't, uh, you know, the, the man himself that, that that says it. So, and and then you take the hope away, or because you're going to be dropping the price uh, within the first few days of the first week, and then you start getting uh, persuaded, uh, pushed into the whole sec the whole area of of of, of you know, pricing it a lot lower than what you really want in order to to bring in the to bring in the masses to create emotion, but it all goes pear shaped when the market is, when the market isn't in favour of uh, vendors and and is stale, you know, stagnant somewhat uh, in that particular area. Look, I've got a a good friend uh, at the moment that um, went contrary to my uh, recommendations as to what agent to choose, and you know he chose an agent that told him he was going to get him. That he was going to get him uh, two point one million dollars uh, every day of the week. Um, when he asked me what was what I believed, uh, not that I was going to be selling the property for him, but I recommended another agent in that area that 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 would do a much better job. And and we were both of the of the opinion that that his property, you know, on on the best day would be worth one point nine. Uh, on the on the bad day, uh, you know, you'd be you know, you'd be pushing to to get over one point eight. Um, so that that was our opinion uh, at the time, and you know, but uh, along came um, a, a high flying agent in a in a Maserati that was his best friend's friend, uh, and uh, convinced him that his property was worth two point one million dollars every day of the week. They had the first open house inspection last week. Uh, the um, <laughs> nobody turned up. Because the agent was uh, was guiding one one nine five, um, uh, so no, no, but let, let's see. What, and the the conversation that he had after the uh, the open house inspection was, uh, you know, let, let me you know somewhere something along the lines of, let me um, let, let me come and talk to you on Tuesday uh, after the long weekend because we may need to revise the uh, may need to revise the guide. So uh, uh, guess how far guess how low. Uh, he's going to go. He's, he's, yeah, he's the $64,000 question now. 
<laughs> yeah, and of course, as I said uh, earlier on, uh, and in that uh, show that I showed before, people have an expectation set by the agent and then destroyed by the agent. Uh, and, uh, you know, the amount of discounting that's really gone on there is probably deceptive uh, compared with what the uh, what the information would be displayed. Although I'd make the point at the moment, I notice on the portals a lot of uh, is now price on application, you know, so they're not actually putting guides um, uh, actually up on the website. So that's another little uh, indicator of uh, a softer market. As we come to the end of the show, we should just touch the numbers and uh, just briefly, let's look at Sydney. So on the 30th of September, 20,251 properties listed. And then if we jump forward to the next week, 7th of October, 20,569. So, you know, it's a little bit of a move there. And uh, if you look at the chart, this now is getting quite interesting, Edwin, isn't it? You can see here that the accelerated listings compared with last year are now something to, something to behold. Yeah, and uh, although we're only about 1,000 properties more uh, year on year, uh, from um, 2023 uh, for for um, pre-sending homes, uh, we're almost uh, 3,000, um, sorry, 2,000 uh, more listings for uh, uh, apartments uh, in the in the Sydney region. So apartments and and, and the houses are uh, are almost on par in Sydney. It's going to be it, it, when you start showing the, the the Melbourne figures, it's it's a totally different world. Yeah, well, let's look at Melbourne. And uh, here, of course, uh, the grief continues. I had a couple of one-on-ones this last week with people in the Melbourne area really now struggling to make any sense of what's going on because prices seem to be just uh, achingly low and falling, and uh, yet vendors aren't actually um, being able to sell. So on the 30th, 29,290 listed jump forward a week, 30,169. And once again, it's just worth looking, houses are leading the charge. Yeah, so you've got, you've got 16,000, uh, what is it, 16,000, uh, let me just blow it up a bit, 16,263 uh, pre-standing homes for sale in the Melbourne region, as opposed to uh, 6,000, uh, just over six and a half thousand apartments, uh, which is uh, you know, totally different to to the numbers in 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 Sydney. And then, you know, in, but we also got over four thousand uh, home land, you know, uh, you know, blocks of land for sale as well. But the yeah, the what's what's really uh, giving you know, my attention there is the the, the, the double the amount of free sending homes uh, in, in Melbourne, and you know, it, it's a to watch this space, but you also got to ask yourself the question: Why aren't the renters jumping in? Hmm. Yeah, well, um, the fact is, of course, that borrowing capacity is still very constrained, and uh, I, there's a lot of nervousness. Of uh, again, from my one-on-one -on -one conversations, a lot of nervousness from prospective purchasers worrying that they're buying into a sliding market, and therefore, uh, despite the fact that some renters are actually um, finding it really difficult to pay the rents. They're not wanting to jump out of frying pan into fire. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, in terms of Brisbane, so uh, the 4122 is the number on the 30th of September. 4166 a week later. So the relative uh, numbers in Brisbane are, you know, are still relatively low. And of course, we've got the election running at the moment with all of the promises to, <laughs> to people. Vote for me. I'll give you more handouts. Um, the IMF, by the way, criticised the states as well as the uh, federal governments for uh, the the fact of the matter. And uh, you know, giving money away is not necessarily a good thing. I also make this point: there was an interesting article this week about the Gold Coast. Um, an unfinished Gold Coast apartment block was up for sale. Crisis hit apartment sector in the Gold Coast is another victim with a potentially partially completed sixty-unit, eight-level block hitting the market on behalf of receivers after the collapse of its builder. The median price for units has risen 31.3% in the past two years compared to 23.5% for houses and 26.5% for townhouses. So there's something quite weird going on there in terms of the Gold Coast and uh, what's what's going on. And it's fascinating. Again, I've had some conversations with people um, 
on my one-on-one story with regards to trying to make sense of the Brisbane market. And it is quite varied. So it's not uniformly um, going up um, dramatically. And again, the quality of what's coming on the market is not necessarily that great. And there are some suburbs in and around um, the area of Brisbane and the Gold Coast where prices are actually not higher. So again, I think it's very much to be cautious at the moment rather than actually uh, just jumping in and saying, oh, everything's going up in um, in, in Brisbane and the Gold Coast. It's not, not true. Another point, of course, on the auctions, the... Um, Last week we had uh, you know various holidays and we've got more holidays this week. Um, but the clearance rates, as we've said, are relatively low at the moment. And um, my sense is, Edwin, that the auction market is uh, going to continue to weaken in the next uh, few weeks. Yeah, look, uh, with, obviously with more more on market and and people just waiting uh, to see what's going to what's going to happen. Uh, waiting for the rates to come down, waiting for whatever they want to wait for. You know, it's it's going to uh, auctions are going to drag on a little bit, uh, a little bit more. The question is that a lot of uh, people that are that, that are selling in this market, they've got to ask themselves: is is auction the best the, the best way to you know, to to sell your home? Uh, you know, again, it all comes back to where you are, what you've got, what what, what you're trying to sell. Uh, and also, more importantly, is uh, who's the agent that's uh, that's uh, taking carriage of uh, of the sale, and and you know how how strong is the marketing campaign? Um, so, do they have your best interests at heart, or do they have the back back pocket? Uh, yeah, the are they interested more in the back pocket. <laughs> yeah, good question. Absolutely good question. Let's take a quick look at the rent. So the rental sector in Sydney region, as defined by domain, the end of September, 11,695. Jump forward to 11,644 a week later, so a drop. And in Melbourne on the 30th, 10,719. Now 10,984. So interestingly, there's a rise in the Melbourne market, and that's surprising at this time of year, Edwin. No, but it's not a it's not a huge rise. Um, I, I guess they look there, there are some some properties that have gone over to the sales ledger that will no doubt come back into the rental arena because of the the the, the they simply can't sell them, mm. and and they've got a the, the haircut that they've got to have is. Too close to you know, uh, too, too close for comfort, and they need to. Uh, they'll, they'll put it back into the into the rental arena. I mean, uh, there's you know uh, there are people that are, would also be uh, would have been looking at selling, um, but um, they would have just uh, you know renewed leases as well, uh, because in some areas, uh, you know, when you've got uh, you know, the, the amount of free sending homes for sale. And when you start looking at the regions of of Melbourne, um, yeah, there, there's the, the the rental markets there are very much capped. Uh, to there's a lot more, but uh, um, it's regulated a lot more than what it is here in the, in the Sydney in the Sydney rental market. So therefore, you know, being capped, there's only so much that you can do. So when you get to the point where you, you just got to sit back and, and take a deep breath and uh, hang out there for for another another uh, six months, twelve months, you know, is it going to be eighteen months, twenty four months before the market picks up? It all come back to w- what type and future government policies uh, are, are dished out, and, and how much more pain can the investors bear before more come on the market, or or they get you know uh, pulled off? Or um, you know, my, my my view is, as I said, Martin, my view is is this: at the end of the day. It is not helping, you know, th- these draconian um, taxes that have that that have been the the investors have been hit there uh, is not helping the the, uh, the the renters at all. Uh, if anything, it's putting uh, putting more pressure in, in the in the short term. What's going to happen in the long term is a different uh, kettle of fish. But short term, uh, I think the renters are still going to be suffering uh, for the next uh, twelve to eighteen months uh, at least. Yeah, I fear you're right, unfortunately. And as we come to the end of the show, just time for your tip of the week. And uh, kitchen renovations and engineered stone, a warning. Yeah, this is this is interesting. I was talking to the um, one of our stone guys 
uh, we just did a, a, a did up a kitchen for one of our clients um, that we helped buy. And you know, talking to him, um, interesting fellow, uh, very well you know, educated uh, over in uh, China as well as uh, uh, got a, a further um, uh, degree here in, uh, in in Australia. Very very well versed in in the English language and very very smart fellow. Um, and you know, he's um, I was talking to him about the engineered stone. We we're going to uh, uh, you know, with the issues with the, uh, the having not you know, stone now coming in that's supposed to be you know, not supposed to contain any silica and that. And he looked at me and he smiled and he and he goes, "Yeah, that's what they tell us, right?" So <laughs> well, come on, tell me more. What, what's going on? You're the you're, you're in the game. Yeah, tell me more. And so, and he just said, "You just got to be very very careful." Where you get your stone from, because as you can you can imagine, over in China, it's very easy. So all all that, so this is this is not Dusty, not me. This is him telling me this, right? So he said, um, "Look, you're, we're dealing with we're, we're dealing with a uh, you know companies over in in China where most of this product comes from, and also you, you've got the uh, the other engineered stone that comes from Vietnam." But he said to me, "Think about this. How easy is it to just, uh, you know, uh, change the paperwork around and and just make, uh, you know, create paperwork that says, yeah, this this uh, engineer saying does not have silica. I mean, he, he said, does it get tested when it arrives here in Australia? <laughs> it doesn't." So you know how you know how often is it being tested? Is it being tested at all? So this is this yeah he started throwing this at me. This is what I say. He's a very smart, very witty uh, young man, and <laughs> very smart. And he's going shit. I'd never thought of that. And then he says, well, look, we are dealing with we are dealing with uh, the CCP, right? We are dealing with companies that are partially owned by the CCP. I mean, he's going in, going in all sorts of directions. So look, at the end of the day, he said, look. All I can say to you is, you've just got to be careful. We, when I say you, we've got to be careful where we buy the stone from, and it has to be um, from a reputable uh, supplier that doesn't want to ruin uh, uh, or harm its reputation in the in the local, meaning the you know, the the Australian market, because they've bought in uh, stone with dodgy paperwork from abroad. But he said there is a lot of that coming in. Very interesting and uh, no surprise, I think. And, uh, you know, echoes for me the issues with um, uh, board coming in from overseas with asbestos cylinders and not being picked up. Um, and I think this is a similar problem. So you need to be understanding the supplier. And as you say, reput reputable suppliers won't do that necessarily, but uh, not everybody is, is reputable. Edwin, thank you very much for that. Uh, great show tonight and uh, very important information I think we've been talking about. I will just remind everybody that tomorrow I'm running my live show. I've called it Maxed Out, the latest household and postcode analysis. So that's 8 p.m. at Sydney time. So I'll join us for that. And Edwin, we'll be back next week for... Another rant. So much more to talk about then, I'm sure. Sure, Martin. Looking forward to it. See you. Take, Take care. Have a good week. Bye.